Welcome back. I finally got this thing all wired up and ready to go. So today, we're gonna make some chips with it. This is what happens when you see the cool kids playing with their full-size horizontal mills on YouTube. You go out and buy a toy size one and drag it into your basement. I've got it wired into a VFD over here. This takes 220 volt single phase input and turns it into three phase output to run the motor. There's just an on off switch up above. The VFD runs a cooling fan, whether you're running the motor or not. So I wanted to be able to power it off. It's all mounted to the wall right next to the mill, so it's easy to get to. And I think I'll use the rest of the space on that board to hang the few cutters that I have and any more that I collect along the way. This thing has variable speed, not just from the VFD that's powering the motor, but also from a built-in Reeves drive that's inside of there. It uses that hand wheel down there to adjust the speed. And if you don't know what a Reeves drive is, basically it's a two-step variable diameter V-belt pulley. So there's a pulley right here. It's got two spots for V-belts to ride in, one going up towards the spindle, one going down towards the motor. And this middle section of the pulley can go back and forth, which can increase and decrease the diameter of both of those. So by turning this hand wheel here, you can vary the diameter of these and therefore vary the speed that the motor is transmitting up to the spindle. I do wanna build a tack that picks up the actual RPM of the spindle so I can get a readout and know exactly what that is. But that's a project for another day. Today I wanna to make some T-nuts for mounting the vise onto the table. This is not the same T-nut profile as my vertical milling machine or say a bridge port or anything. It's smaller, it's three quarter along the bottom and seven sixteenths gap up here at the top of the T. So right now I've got the milling vise just bolted down using regular nuts and bolts. It's gonna work for now. I really want this thing to be able to make its own T-nuts. So that's what we're gonna to try to do. This is a piece of half inch by, uh, it's about an inch, a little less. Just hot rolled, mild steel. And we're going to try to clean up the two sides of that, and then we'll start working on the profile of the T. This is the cutter I'm gonna try out. I don't have that many horizontal mill cutters. I've only got a few. This is just high speed steel. It feels semi sharp. We're gonna give it a shot just to flatten off both of these two sides. Going to put a drop of whey oil on here for the overarm support. This is a left-handed nut on the end of the spindle, and you don't want to tighten it up until you have the overarm support in here. It keeps you from torquing and bending the, the arbor at all. It's going to be a little noisy once the VFD turns on. I'm just going to feed up until we touch off. Then I'll move it out of the way, lock all the directions of travel except for the direction that we're cutting in here, and then engage the power feed, see what happens. All the cutting that I'm going to do on this is going to be conventional milling. On an old machine like this, you don't want to be climb cutting. Just barely touched right there. Guess the cut's not quite even off the rough cut side. I'm gonna feed up about five thou. Lock the knee and engage the power feed. 
I've got my finger on the button to disengage the power feed, just in case anything happens. Definitely not the sharpest of cutters. Doesn't make that clean of chips. I've got my eye out online for some new old stock or lightly used cutters, and also a way to try to figure out how to sharpen up the ones that I have. Didn't do a terrible job. Had some vibrations through this area right here, but otherwise not too bad for the condition of the cutter. I wish I could choke up on the arbor. On a bigger machine, you can position the overarm support in closer to the cutter. This one, the overarm support only rides on this uh, reduced diameter out here on the end of the arbor, so I can't move it in any. I can try moving the cutter in a little bit, but I can probably only go about this much further. You need to allow clearance in here for the vise. So I can try that, see if that helps a little bit. On the back of the machine, the drive step pulley that goes on the spindle and drives the power feed, the smallest diameter of the step pulley was damaged beyond repair. It had already been brazed up at one point and was still falling apart. So I just took it off and cleaned up what was left. I need to remake that smaller diameter so I can slow down the power feed even more. This is gonna be plenty usable for T-nuts. So I'm gonna file off these edges and then we'll flip it over and flatten out this side. once I get some nice sharp cutters that'll be able to handle that a lot easier. It actually leaves a pretty good finish. It just can't handle more than 15 or 20 thousandths depth of cut at a time. And I feel like it shouldn't struggle at that light of a cut. So this was the first side. I was messing around with the speed on the VFD a little bit. So that's why this section right here isn't as smooth. But the second side, I mean, that's a, it's a nice finish. It just wasn't easy for it. Didn't make very nice chips. So now I'm gonna set it up in here sideways. I've got a quarter inch wide cutter. This one actually feels a lot sharper. So I'm hoping that's gonna make some nicer chips out of it. I'll get that set up. We'll touch off on the side and we're gonna move over 156 thousandths. We'll do that on each side. That should leave me seven sixteenths in the middle there. And I don't know, I'll try 50 thousandths or so depth of cut, see what it does. If it handles it, we'll adjust it from there. This is 
actually making some chips that look like reasonable chips, but you can tell by the sound that the cutter is a little bit off center. Either the cutter is off or the arbor is bent a little bit. But it is cutting well. I'm gonna back up and take another 50 and see if it'll handle the 100,000 steps when it catches up there. Gotta move the camera for a second to get to the hand wheel. Here it should be catching up and have 100,000 steps of cut. I got five T-nuts out of that little bar. I just drilled and tapped these 3 8 16 so I can use standard hardware to bolt down a vise or clamps or whatever. And these all fit in the T-slot nicely. I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with this machine, especially once I get some more nice sharp cutters. This one was cutting pretty well. It just wasn't engaging all the teeth all the way around the cutter. I put a dial indicator on the middle of the arbor, and if you spin it, it's out a little over a thousandth as you rotate it, which for a machine like this, I don't think that's all that bad. I'm, obviously, it's not perfect, um, but I wonder also if this cutter is off a little bit. The larger cutter that I was using at first, definitely not as sharp, but it seemed like it was engaging more all the way around. And I know these arbor spacers wobble all over the place, you can see on camera, and that's because the OD isn't concentric with the ID. But I don't think that's adding to my problem, I think it's just annoying to look at. 
if you mic the length of these in a ton of places all the way around, it's within a couple tenths of each other. So I think they're about as good as I'm gonna get. This was a good little project to get familiar with the machine and make something useful at the same time. I really like that I can walk away and let the feed shut off after it's done with the cut. I can go and do something else while this thing is cutting. And once I get some better cutters and replace the pulley in the back so I can slow down the power feed in relation to the speed of the spindle, it's gonna be even better. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.